So how are we feeling about the Nats? Almost to the halfway point of the season. Obviously disappointing start, and they're way back in the division. But they found themselves right back in the wild card mix. Yeah, I kind of uh, was thinking about this a little bit after after the game Sunday, and it just you know, this looks like the team that um, you know that, that we kind of predicted before the season, and just the way that they've kind of been playing uh, the lineup on most nights. Um, that are that are you know, playing, you know, having career best years between Rendon and, and Soto is, is kind of heated back up, and uh, Adam Eaton's picked it back up lately, and, and obviously Harry Kendrick, uh, Brian Dozier's picked it up lately, and it's just the lineup is just is kind of a, a, a menace to go through. Um, the starting pitching, obviously, the guys at the top of the rotation are are, are what they are, and then Anibal Sanchez um, has picked it up, and I just think that you know, and even the bullpen is. is, is been for the most part a little bit more competent the past couple of weeks. It just feels like this is this is kind of what we all saw <laughs> uh, before the beginning of the year, and it makes it. Um, you know, I, I, I've been kind of wondering is it is going to be too late, and have they dug themselves in too big of a hole? And I think that that's kind of the biggest question that I have. You know, this stretch coming up, they've really got to beat up on these teams. I think that um, are out of contention here to really try to make up some of that ground somewhat quickly here, because um, even though they are they are kind of a little bit right there in a wild card race, there are a bunch of teams jumbled up there, and you don't want to um, you know find yourself having to jump four or five or six teams really just to get into the race if uh, you go through the last couple of months of the season or so. So I don't know. I feel a lot better about the Nets. I feel like this team is suddenly put things together, um, but I still just kind of wonder, is it, is it going to be too late in the long run? Because they have to go on a pretty big run here uh, to make up some of that ground. It could be too late, but at least they're making it interesting, thank God. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, as you mentioned, the hitting's picked up, the pitching's picked up, except for the bullpen, right? And the bullpen's better. I mean, it was historically bad for a while. Yeah. It's gotten some better. Um, they finally moved on from Rosenthal, and you know... Uh, you cover the team. We've met him in spring training. Just is such a great guy. I hate to see that happen to him, but it had to happen. Now they bring in uh, Rodney. You know, he's 42. wasn't even pitching that well in the minors. Um, I've been trying to argue with my guys here that it's still an upgrade. I mean, Rosenthal was pitching to a 22 ERA, so it's still an upgrade. Yeah, I mean, you know, on one hand, yes, like uh, any, any anything that was kind of not Rosenthal and the guy who just. Really, you couldn't trust no matter what situation. Uh, obviously, after the after that blow up on Saturday, it just became a point where you know how many outings can he have that are positive that you think now like there was nothing that he could do to all of a sudden to give you some confidence that he could go out and do it again in a close game. So I think you know again Rodney's going to be in a similar situation. You probably aren't going to throw him into the fire right away. Hopefully, you have a chance to ease him into some some lower leverage situations or some situations where you feel comfortable. Uh, not that's going to do a whole whole lot, but um, yeah, as they saw with Rosenthal, you can't hide a guy on your roster for too long. Eventually, you're gonna have he's gonna have to pitch and pitch in some kind of spot of uh, consequence, especially when all these games matter as much as they do for that. So, um, you know, with Rodney, it's a guy who they signed. You can take a flyer on him, see what he's uh, see what you ha- if he has anything left, um, and if not, you kind of have to be prepared to move on quickly here. But um, you know, I think that that's basically where we are here. Is that you know. They signed a bunch of these veteran relievers here. You may, as, you know, they, they feel like they may as well test them out and see if they have anything left before they kind of go on. The other options they have in the minors, uh, some of the younger guys, some of the the guys in the uh, in Double A and Triple A right now, you can always kind of go back to the Contos and Burks and stuff. Those guys will be there. Um, aren't going anywhere. Rodney, they kind of had to, to make a move on now. Jamal, do you think Mike Rizzo alters his approach to the bullpen uh, before next season? Spends a little bit more money. I know he splurged a little bit on Rosenthal. That didn't exactly work out. Do you think he put pours more assets into the bullpen heading into the 2020 season? Um, that's tough to say, um, and I and I can't. I haven't I haven't spoken to him, but directly on this, uh, you know, topic at least, um, I would say that he probably has to figure out exactly what kind of budget he's working with. Uh, you know, it's theoretically going into next season, obviously depending on kind of what happens with Rendon um, and, and, and with Zim and such, but, you know, they, there might not be a whole, whole lot of – there might not be as much roster turnover as there was kind of going into this year where he had to feel like he allocated um, the, the budget that he had into so many different things. He's probably not going to have to spend on a, a major starting pitcher again this year. So I, I would think that, you know, if, if assuming that Rendon is not kind of the big – uh, budget, you know, big big ticket that you have to write, big check of the right this off season. That he would probably try to be aggressive there, and I don't. Pitching market looks like, but um, you know, I, I I think it's difficult to say because he's going to have the the closer at the end and Doolittle probably still locked up here, you know, unless Barton gets traded or something. Um, but assuming you have Doolittle still there uh, <laughs> at the at the end of the season, you know, that's usually where you spend the big money on a closer. And I don't um, I don't I don't know. I would be like you said, just such a change of course uh, for him all of a sudden to big spend a lot of money on a reliever that um, was going to 
set to back up a little. So um, I don't know. I, I think it'd be interesting to see, but I, I wouldn't. My gut right now tells me I'm not sure that, that that's a thing he definitely did. Joined by Jamal Collier, national beat writer for MLB.com, covers the Nationals. All right, so you mentioned Rendon. We were speculating yeah. about it before. It's all speculation. But what is your sense as you talk to the the people around the team, you know, in the front office? And then Rendon doesn't speak much. I don't know if you've spoken to him. <laughs> what is your sense from him? No, he doesn't speak much. Is what he uh, that is from him? You know, I, I I don't think a whole whole lot of um, you know. Feeling the change is on the other side. I think that they both are motivated to get things done. I think that, you know, Rizzo, I believe, said, and maybe even with you guys uh, recently about they, they went back and forth on multiple offers. Um, I really just have not gotten a sense of, of whether or not they've closed some of the gaps that they had earlier in the year or not, um, as far as just the, of where those two sides were. Um, I can say this, Rendon is still playing like one of the best hitters in the league, and I don't, I don't think there's any reason for um, him and Scott Boris and that camp and their price to have gone down. Uh, at all from where it was at the beginning of the year. And I know that that price was approaching, um, you know, if, if not being exactly what kind of not or not only I got before the year, it was definitely approaching that. Um, so I would I would assume that, you know, unless the Nats have, have, have started to come up on that offer that, um, like I said, just, I don't think that Rendon and, and company have given any reason to go down because of just the season that he's having um, and as good as he's been, especially with the way the free agent market has kind of deteriorated around them. Right, which leads us to believe that this is heading towards the Bryce Harper Highway. We're this late into the yeah. season. They're this close to free agency. They don't wait this long for their free agent year and then just give it up. I, I, I yeah. put the likelihood of them keeping Rendon at this point. I mean, they may keep him and just roll the dice and hope they can make a run with him, but I think they're less. Would you argue with that? Uh, are you saying resigning him before the season no, is no, over or before just, the speeches oh, in general? Ever. Ever. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, if he's on the open market, I think that there's a reason that they should still be bidding for him, and, and I don't know why you, you kind think of they'll be the highest the bidder? can do it. Uh, I mean, we didn't see a whole lot of high bidders this, this past winter. You know, I, 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 it, it's difficult to say. Like, I, I don't know which team would be in exactly on there. The Yankees, obviously, are going to probably be the third baseman, so that's kind of a difficult one to beat uh, if, if they really want to put the money up for Rendon. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know how teams are going to operate again with the luxury tax and, and where those things are going to stand. And, and you know, I, I, I think – I wouldn't go as low as 10%. I don't think I'm as optimistic as I was a couple of months ago, Is you know, where I probably would have something over 50%. Um, I think I've kind of come down on that because, again, he's, he's probably one of the best hitters in baseball. He is going to approach get a contract that is going to look like that. Um, you know, if he continues this the rest of the year, and I don't think there's any reason to think that he's going to slow down. I, I'm just getting the sense, though, that this is going to be sort of, I don't know, the – the 2020s version of like the the twins or something where we're going to groom young superstars and then when they're due for their big payday we're not going to pay them and we're just going to sort of on our arrogance assume that we're going to keep drafting their replacements and i don't know that i could be a fan of that but if one that's what's going to happen to distinguish from last year to this year is last year they knew if bryce goes we've got soto and robles i don't know and jamal you can speak on this if they have any confidence yeah. in a third Line. Yeah, and I, and that's that's one of the things. Even when I thought about when they were going, if if Rendon potentially would get traded or not before the deadline, I thought to myself, "Who's going to play third base every day?" Just for the rest of this season, it, you know, one more Defoe might be your best option, or Kendrick, or I mean, you know, like there's not really a, a, a next guy up um, to come up. I mean, Carter Keboom at some point people kind of assumed that thought that he maybe could sit the third base. He obviously has never done it in the minors, so I don't think that that's a realistic thing right away, but, you know, maybe they kind of move him or Luis Garcia, one of those guys for the future, but um, another another reason why I think there's some, some, some it's going to be some motivation still to get this thing done because that pipeline in third base especially is really dry, um, so if you're I not signing right. Rendon this offseason, you're going to have to get somebody else. 